Are you thinking about being an RV owner? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Do you want to learn more? Are you missing freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Rob and welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Busy week like normal and got a lot of things to share with you. I also discovered we know how to cook. (laughs) So if you get a chance, we just got a video the other day. We called it uh, chicken soup, making um, chicken soup. And we discovered how to use one of those new power pressure cookers. So uh, (laughs) now... (laughs) Every week we're making all kinds of soup. We made chicken soup. We made a split pea soup. And I think we're going to try a potato soup. And oh my gosh, it just never ends. But I got to admit, that pressure cook is pretty cool. So you get a chance. We have a video out uh, on RV Travel Buddy called Chicken Soup for the Soul. And we'll show you how we made our chicken soup and how to use the new pressure cooker. So... Let's get on with the show. Well, I'm going to cover another subject. Well, a subject I've covered before, and I'm going to keep talking about it as we find solutions against this problem. And it's critters. In our case, it's the sugar ants. It's sugar ants 10, Scribner's 0. (laughs) Anyway, so... Sugar ants are something that can affect you. Whether you have a new rig, old rig, doesn't matter. Lots of things to do to help keep it down to a minimal. Is it seems like no matter what we use, doesn't seem to cure the problem. Uh, so we spray our slides. We spray inside our cupboards. We keep the mouse mo- uh, mouse but uh, the uh, ant motel things that from raids that you can get. Uh, Try to keep the counters clean. Do not leave anything in the dishes, especially if it has sugar in it, like ice cream bowl or something like that. Constant battle. Uh, So the next thing that we find, because the other day uh, I found out some got into some cereal we had. And because we had an open box, we did close it up and stuff, but it still got in. It's like, that's it. So that following weekend we went shopping <laughs> we went to target we went to all places and we decided that anything we have that we open up needs to be sealed in like tupperware so we got tupperware for cereal we got tupperware for dog food we got tupperware for kitty food we got tupperware to put noodles in Uh, every shape and form of things that you would end up opening and need to seal up so there's a new tip for you if you're going to be an RVer get in the habit of packaging your stuff differently especially if it's going to be something that you open and leave open like a sugar or a bag of sugar or flour or things like that Um, the other thing we use a lot of is those clips so you can never have enough clips it's kind of like socks it's like just when you need a clip there's never an extra clip so buy lots of clips the ones that you can seal up uh, potato chips or seal up uh, sugar uh, if you buy it in the bag form Uh, anything that um, uh, to keep don't don't give the sugar ants a target if they find something they'll tell everybody so (laughs) There is my RV tip today. Seal up your food. Get in the habit. Uh, if you got pop cans or anything like that, get rid of them. Do not leave your, especially if you're throwing those things away into your garbage can, uh, empty your garbage immediately or every day so uh, you don't give a good home for or a reason for sugar ants to want to be here. So the more we do that, the less we see them. We still avidly spray, but close everything up folks and seal it up and that will help you in the future alrighty then now it's time to reveal some of the things we've been working on again so if you have noticed we launched a radio show 
not just a podcast, a radio show, a, a, what they call a internet station. It's called Outdoor Travel Radio. And um, the way you listen to it is several ways. You can listen to it. any of the media players that you either have on your PC or on your phone. Uh, go to the website itself, which is OutdoorTravelRadio.com, and you can connect right there. Or you can use a device on your phone, go into the directories of Shoutcast, you can find us there. Uh, it's a great way to hear not only RV related stuff, but what we wanted to have is a platform that went well beyond just the RV lifestyle. We wanted to talk about travel and we wanted people to have a platform to do that with beyond just RVing and when we talk about travel it can be caravans it can be airplanes it can be trains it can be motorcycles it can be all different of types of traveling that you actually can do I don't care if it's even hiking that will fit on the show the other part we wanted to uh, be able to have on a show and talk about or give other people a chance to talk about was outdoor activities which relate to RVing just fine it's just you know we all don't just sit in our RV all day it's you step out of the RV and do stuff and so we felt it was important to um, have a new platform that we can talk about fishing we can talk about fly fishing we can talk about hunting we can talk about beach activities uh, kiting we can talk about quilting <laughs> Wow, it's not really outdoor activity. Could be um, all kinds of things, games that go on. We uh, and so our show, our station will support business. It will support organizations. It can support clubs, memberships, uh, different kinds of organizations or guide services that can help give us our viewers uh, um, guidance in uh, in the regions that we go to. It just goes on and on and on. So the platform really came, is really open. And uh, we, uh, I'm very fortunate. I actually have some help uh, with this project. Uh, Aaron Jimerson's been helping. You'll hear his voice a lot more on there. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity. If you're listening to us and you have a park, a business, a service, a club, anything like that that you'd like to get on our show obviously our shows just starting out so we certainly have to be humble and so if you'd like to create a commercial already have commercial audio made we can get you on the show we'll put you in a uh, good spots and uh, if you are a business or a service or a club or a caravan service or something like that and you'd like to be interviewed by us all you need to do is just go to our website at outdoortravelradio.com. Go to the contact page. Just describe what you'd like to do for advertising, and we can help you out. If you don't have any audio, you can create a script, give it to us, and then our people will create a, a commercial for you or or. Uh, some kind of little uh, audio that you'd like to have on the show and we'll put it in unique spots just remember that the platform is either through bartering trading free type thing um, in some cases if it cost us money to build it for you we would be asking for at least to have our expenses covered so it's a great opportunity to get on the radio as we're growing we also will keep in um, check that those people that help us out and we're helping them we kind of gonna make sure that they're grandfathered in as we grow so they always have the opportunity to be on the show no matter how much we grow because you never want to burn your bridges those are the people that helped you out and you always want to stand behind them so great opportunity great show we just got our music license Great music, easy listening, pop music too. Um, the, sh the kind of music we wanted on there is the kind that 
nobody, some people will never can, you know, uh, <laughs> the kind of songs that you kind of want to sing to, the ones that we all know. So it's easy listening, pop music, probably classical in some cases because of older uh, folks, I guess, but not too old. But the, I mean, you'll have modern uh, artists on there to older artists, but they're going to be very familiar music. So uh, good talk shows on there uh, and good talk shows on the way. So be patient. The show's new. I hope you enjoy uh, as it evolves. We'll need your help with your feedback of things you'd like to hear on the show that to make you uh, uh, excited to keep coming back. And uh, right now we're plugging in a lot of uh, our archives from RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. And so lots of cool things going on. And we're developing new interviews. And once again, if you'd like to be interviewed, just contact us and we'll find a way to do it. So we can either do it by Skype, we can do it by Blab, we can do it by phone. There's all kinds of way to, ways to do that. If you have some... Uh, material already made send it on in and if it's applicable it's good tasteful stuff we'll get you on the show once again just to remind you it's called outdoortravelradio.com and it's call letters is k-o-t-r give it a listen people appreciate it So this part of the show is my dream. <laughs> you want to know what my dream is? That people would quit driving so darn fast. That's it. That's my dream. And the reason I say that is why is everybody always in a hurry? And I always, it, it depends on the region, I know. And, and of course, Americans are, you know, I want it now kind of people. But, oh, it just seems like I don't care if I'm pulling a trailer or not. Uh, and I don't just, you know, man, I, I don't, if this is 55, I just don't hang at 55. I'll do 59 to 61, somewhere around there and stay out of trouble. And I always seem to get somebody on my tail section saying, you're going too slow. And I always try to stay out of the way. I really do. But my attitude with driving is I want to get to from A to B alive. That's it. That's no not fast. I don't care if I'm late. I just want to get from A to B alive. And then from B to A alive. And all the in-betweens. I just want to get there alive. I, I don't drive to try to get killed. <laughs> I try to get, I drive to get from point A to point B. And maybe it's an age thing, but that's not necessarily true. And it certainly isn't a religious thing. And the reason I laugh, I have to laugh is I have some wonderful uh, cousins and relatives of an East Coast, very avid uh, religious groups that they uh, belong to. They do missions, things like that. Really wonderful people, and I, do, I totally admire them. And so when I go to see them, and I got to go see them about a few years back, I was kind of, you know, they're very um, uh, formal. They definitely are religious based families <laughs> I'll just say it that way but they live in the east coast and I had to follow one or two of them from one event to another uh, for a family reunion kind of thing and realize that no matter how Christian you may be or how humble you are or community leader when they get behind the wheel they're uh, possessed <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like maybe because it's Connecticut, Connecticut area, North uh, New York area, but they just turn into animals, Rawr! and and they just, I mean, it's like they get behind the real the wheel of their car and they just become this thing. Anyway, so I don't know what it is. I gotta get there, pass, zip, 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 zip. Uh, make this car perform. Uh, they're just animals. I don't get it. I just don't get it. And then, doesn't some of the realities of people seeing some of these accidents people get in, and your their lives are devastated for you know what, all their life from a silly mistake of texting or going too fast or drinking, 
things like that. So I don't know. I just my dream is people just abide by the law. Chill out. If you're late for something, you're late for something. And I've noticed people will be right in my tail section, past me, and the next light comes up and I'm right behind them. I just want to wave to them saying, I'm still here, even though you passed me and rest your life and everybody in your car. It's, a, it's just, it's amazing. So there is my dream, people. Drive calmly, drive safely, and don't be in a hurry. Just get to from point A to B alive. And life would be wonderful. The next part of the show I want to title, I have an RV, RV dream. dream. And this dream consists of a couple of improvements I'd like to see people do in RV parks. And one of them is yappy dogs. Oh my goodness, yappy yappy dogs. If there's some way that, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the owners of some of these dogs could probably train their dogs a little bit better but uh, if you have a dog that's yappy and especially well not so I mean I don't mind it so much if they're with them an ACL person that they're doing their job but if you decide to leave the uh, dogs in your rig and take off at evening or something and it just barks all night uh, that's kind of an issue and I, I know it's hard and, and I, but I, it, it's really irritating people. So if you're not sure if your dog's doing that, you know, you can get a little webcam thing set up in your RV, very, pretty simple. And uh, we have one for Cinder, so we can check on her when we're gone. And I don't, I just feel like if you're going to be a pet owner, you need to be responsible for the way they act. So that's one of my pet peeves in a dream that all dogs would not bark when they're not supposed to. The other thing is um, late night parties. And I guess uh, the problem with that is uh, you have kind of different types of RVers. If you're in a particular park that might be near a, uh, uh, a place where people do activities, you probably get the weekend warriors. And the weekend warriors we urge them, please go out and, and, and use your RVs and stuff. But, you know, the problem is, is, you know, they're working nine to five. And I understand that. And they get there for the weekend. And it's pretty much let your hair down, party uh, till two o'clock at night. Uh, and partying, I, I guess it sounds bad, but just yakking and laughing all night long and stuff. Um, I guess the big thing is, is if I could have a dream and it is when it gets around 10 o'clock to bring it down a little bit. I still expect a little bit of it, but just bring it down out of respect. But some folks, they just go all out and, and, and maybe it's alcohol related or whatever. But my dream is, is everybody respects one another in the RV parks and realize that whether it's a weekend or not, uh, at certain times of the evening, it, you bring it down a level. Uh, I certainly don't expect it to stop, and I'm sure it'll be slip-ups and heavy, you know, really loud laughter and stuff. But if you can still try to bring it down a little out of respect for each other, that would be kind of nice. My next dream would be people that are getting ready to leave in their rigs, whether they have a truck or a motorhome, especially if they're diesel, why they feel it necessary to fire up the diesel and run it for a half hour before they leave and I don't know if you realize it but diesels are not quiet and if it's six o'clock in the morning seven o'clock in the morning uh, and you feel it necessary to run your diesel to warm the truck up so early or the motorhome uh, really guys come on um, it's the people that especially uh, you know people on both sides of you they, their windows are normally right by your rig, they, you know, especially in a, like a fifth wheel. Our, our windows are right there, and, and <laughs> that noise is very irritating. So out of respect, when you get ready to uh, leave, I understand you want to warm them up a little bit, but 10 minutes maybe, is that, you know, 
I think that's reasonable. Not 45 minutes. <laughs> so that's my next dream in RV parks. Don't start your diesel engines any sooner than you have to and run them minimal. Anyway, thanks. I appreciate that. I guess the next thing I brought up before and I keep bringing it up and I'm going to keep bringing it up is pick up after your pets, please. I don't care if it's a pet park or not or you're on a beach, whatever. Please pick up after your pets. Don't you realize that we're, uh, we're losing our rights to do things with our pets? And it's a, that's because of you, the ones that don't pick up. So um, keep them poopy bags in your back pocket. Take care of it. Don't ignore it. And, you're, and quit being so proud that you don't do that. I, I actually noticed in the RV park a person that never took their dog to the little dog park. Always had to go off um, to a side road, uh, off the park, whatever. And make them, and they go, and we got rattlesnakes here. It's like, that's kind of dumb. But you could tell there was just, one, well, you know, a person is just doesn't pick up. Just won't. It's, they're too good to do that, or whatever it is. And it's like, I remember when it started getting to a point we all had to do that. I remember how I felt about doing that. And it's like, I'm sorry, but times have changed. It's, you know, it's kind of like phones. We don't use rotary phones anymore. We use push buttons. And, and normally we don't use those anymore. We use cell phones with push buttons. So, guys, you're going to have a pet, especially a dog. You're going to have to pick up the poop. If you, if you got a cat, you got to clean the litter box. So come on, people. Take care of the parks. Quit making us lose our privileges. So um, one more thing I got to bring up is littering. Please, folks. I mean, I, there was a day that I, I know all of us just didn't respect the uh, landscape that much. But you know what? That's another thing that's changed. We got to be proactive even if and smokers that throw your cigarettes out the window I understand I was a smoker too uh, the best thing I can say is don't do that because the forest fires for sure the other thing is the, the easy way to go you know those little bottles that you can get the little mocha uh, coffee drinks at cold uh, uh, I think Starbucks makes them too anyway those little bottles those are awesome to keep in your car so drink one of those keep it and then when you have a cigarette in your car or whatever, grab that real quick. They're easy to open once you've opened one up. Put your cigarette in there and then close the lid. It will go out. Simple to do. Keeps everything clean. And when you, those get filled up, you can either reuse that jar or by then maybe you bought another coffee drink and replace it. And just throw that away in the garbage. It's safe. It's clean. It doesn't make the car smelly. And it's... And keeps you from throwing those cigarettes out the wing window and stuff. I'm not going to say you know, good, bad, or indifferent, whatever, but it's going to cause a fire and it's littering. So those kind of little things we can do. Uh, and, you know, there's garbage cans everywhere. Keep your garbage in the car until you get to a gas station and, and even a little store. They all have the little garbage cans there, and then get rid of your garbage. But don't throw it on the side of the road. And also, if you got stuff in the back of your truck, tie it down well. Put a net over it or something. Anyway, that's my dream. <laughs> Maybe it's a lot of belly aching. I'm sorry, but it's a reminder, people, that we need to remind our, tell our kids. We got to tell everybody to and and find a nice way to tell people to stop. Anyway, on with a different subject. Well, I think I came up with another dream, but it's not going to happen. I wish I was 20 or 30 years younger. <laughs> and so, and the reason I say that is I'm watching, a, actually, and I've been watching Gone with the Winds, and I'm sure you guys have too. And if you have not watching them they're a very cute couple they've been RVing for quite a while um, very talented and very um, just talented in speaking and photography and really do a good job reporting the lifestyle of RVing and now they're moving on to sailing um, and <laughs> God, I, I'm so jealous and 
I wish I was so much younger because uh, and some of the things that they have at their disposal we did that too so Sherry and I are very avid boaters we had a boat different types of boat for over over 25 years we had the, uh, the two foot itis thing where we started with a 16 and then later a 21 and a 25 and then got out of it for a while went back into it we actually had a custom weld fishing boat loved that boat that was my favorite boat problem is is like uh you know there's really no there's no restrooms and stuff like that and um so you always had a porta potty thing and um later on our last boat was a 28 foot contessa uh, bayliner uh with a flying bridge and <laughs> that was kind of a disaster uh like that boat and it was kind of a fixer upper but um we were tr and it actually wasn't that long ago i think we got rid of it four years ago and i think we're paying 300 a month for mortgage which if you play the numbers now I, it's like it's probably um make i mean that's actually cheap if you compare it to an rv park uh and then, of course, if you guys will watch the Gone the Winds, they're, they're in the sailing. And I never had the opportunity to sail. I was always an engine kind of guy. And avid f salmon fisherman uh, up in Washington. Uh, we did shrimping, a lot of shrimping, till the regulations changed a little bit and got kind of tough to do it. I uh, love crabbing. Uh, so uh, halibut fishing, we did all that. And uh, you've heard in the other shows, I used to actually work on fishing boats when I was younger. But I never was a, uh, had a chance to sail. I think I'd like it. Um, I guess I'd be kind of like, well, I've been talking about slowing down. So, you know, if you drive, uh, getting from point A to point B alive is really all I want to do. I guess it'd be the same with boating. Is uh, a s Sailing seems very relaxing um, in some cases, but can be tedious in others. So here's what... I know we're not hearing about. I have made it a mission of mine to not only follow the wind, uh, winds, uh, but several other boating channels, which have been very enjoyable, by the way. Uh, most of them have been younger couples, and a handful um, were have been some. Actually, I actually follow one that's a. Uh, got their kids with them and stuff and homeschooling and that's cool but uh, only a few of them really show the realities of being out in the water so if you're living on your boat and you're inland in the marina or you can actually just uh, tie off and that's free by the way or anchor um, then things are pretty uneventful other than the fact that if you anchor or anything like that, your whole life stream is your dinghy. So you always hear them talking about their dinghy or their second boat with a little motor and stuff, how important it is to them. Uh, it's critical in those circumstances. And, uh, you know, th then there's the other problem of transportation. So you take your little dinghy out to, uh, to wherever you're at or country, whatever, and then you're on foot. And so you better hope that there's grocery stores and things like that nearby for food and all that stuff. Remember, if they need to get some diesel uh, or, or some propane or things like that, all that stuff is done on that little boat. And uh, uh, <laughs> when you're young and stuff, you probably don't think nothing of it. Getting a little older, you just remember you're going to be living out of a dinghy. And uh, the other thing is the waters. You just, I mean, and I know the waters. I've done the water. I've been out fishing where, uh, and Westport, we always had to cross the bars and things like that. I'm very, I have a very realistic uh, view of what water can do. And it can be very special. And most of the time it can't, it is. And then there's those days that's relentlessly beating the heck out of you. And then there's days where you really wish you weren't out there and you're scared to death. And so, um, it really takes a lot of planning, a lot of education, a lot of um, gambling when you're trying to go from one point to another, whether you think the wind, uh, your weather is going to hold out. 
And it's like, if you've got a 90 mile crossing and you're only going uh, five to eight miles per hour, can you imagine how long it takes to do that? And those guys are sitting up all night long and taking shifts driving the boat from one point to the other, which is what you should be doing, watching all your uh, uh, settings, your radars, your weather, uh, your, if you're using a sail, watching your sails, your, uh, everything. It's just relentless. And if you think things break are critical, you know, that break on an RV is critical, think about an, uh, a powerboat or even a sailboat. Uh, sailboats are powerboats, folks, and uh, typically if they don't have power, it can be a real problem, especially when it comes to um, mooring your boat, uh, getting into and maneuvering. You can't do it with sails. You just, it's, uh, and uh, if you have a 30, 40 foot boat, uh, <laughs> oars aren't going to cut it. <laughs> so, uh, keeping those engines running are critical. I notice on the catamarans, they've got two engines. That's pretty cool. So if we, uh, it's kind of like a twin screw. If one goes down, at least you have stuff power. You notice a lot of folks that have a single engine will always have a kicker boat for trolling. Uh, I had that scenario too, but I didn't always look at that kicker boat as just for trolling. It was also another way to get home if the engine broke down. So, uh, and the other thing you're dealing with all the time in those cases is corrosion, which means things are going to be breaking hoses and clamps and things you've got to be in that engine compartment and checking your full lines and your electrical and all that stuff all the time and um, I thought the winds were very smart uh, you know you, you kind of cringe you say oh they paid three hundred thousand dollars for this 40-foot boat well it's a home and so if you bought a home for three hundred thousand nowadays that's fairly new would you be surprised <laughs> I don't think so and uh, uh, all the inspections and, and surveys that, that they do is very wise uh, so yeah they probably strapped them for cash and probably made it tight but they have the peace of mind of having a good piece of equipment they have a good benchmark of where to start basically as far as maintenance uh, you get a boat that's a lot older and stuff and and you'll be nickeled and dimed to death terribly so and of course uh, if somebody comes out to work on your boat uh, you can expect um, that their fees are not going to be cheap so you know it has been fun I have been uh, noticing a lot more some folks are actually converting to uh, boating now which um, they're probably just because <laughs> they're the ones that kind of started all this rv channel stuff and they're like all right we kind of mastered that and now everybody else has jumped on board on that uh let's go try something new and a lot of them are saying well let's look at the boating world the sailing world and uh just like us we're actually doing the same thing where we're kind of like you know there's a lot of people just doing this rving stuff we want to expand and go and and get out of, you know not be stuck with just this niche but go beyond that and i know a lot of people that listen to us are like that um i just don't want everybody to think that we just live and breathe our being heck no we like to hunt we like to fish we like to fly fish we like to go to fishing resorts we like all kinds of beauty and and photography and all these things and uh, the RV is a tool to get there and a resource, but there's so much more. So we've opened up our platform, and I see others are kind of looking at opening their platforms too. So <laughs> there you go. Guess I better talk about RV Talk Radio for a minute so I don't panic you. So RV Talk Radio is a podcast and it's focused on RVs, which is cool. And uh, it's not going anywhere. Uh, RVing is part of the outdoors, so you'll find some of our shows here are going to also be on the outdoor travel radio show. And so what's cool about that is if you're a company or business or um, you get interviewed on this show and you end up on the other show, you're going to get lots of exposure. So. If you're uh, interested in um, 
be interviewed or if you're interested in uh, putting a product or service on our podcast, uh, great. Give us a holler. Just go to rvtalkradio.com and go to the contact page and you just let us know what you have in mind. Uh, at the same time, if you also have your own radio show or podcast uh, and like to do a tidbit on one of our shows, no problem. Just contact us. Either go to this website at RV Talk Radio or go to the OutdoorTravelRadio.com. Go to the contact page there and contact us and tell us what you have in mind. And we'll work something out. The cool part is they both complement one another. So the podcast is nice because you can take your time and listen to the show. It's usually typically around an hour long. And you can listen to it either from the uh, your computer, you can listen to it from your cell phone, whatever you'd like to do, and just listen to tidbits until you get through the whole show. Or, um, if you like our radio station, you'll find it's awesome music on it. Uh, it should be a happy, a happy channel with music that you will recognize and uh, fun to drive to. We want to be part of your road trips and your driving time. Just turn on our show, listen to us on your cell phone. You can pull the show up there. And it's a radio station, and uh, it runs 24-7, never stops. Uh, we have different interviews at uh, certain times of the day. Uh, the content will be changing out constantly. Uh, we're just now getting it programmed to uh, our liking, and so we're reaching out. We're going to have... A lot of different stuff, uh, more bro uh, much broader than just the RV stuff, but they all interrelate. So, RV Talk Radio, don't worry, it's not going anywhere. It's right here, and uh, uh, we still want your feedback of things you'd like to see us do on this show. Uh, you might hear some different voices on it. We're trying to work with other folks, and anybody who's interested in working with us a little bit... Um, just let us let us know we're approachable anyway rv talk radio is absolutely safe <laughs> it's not going anywhere uh just a reminder i know you keep hearing me say this but guys if you got a cell phone you got a smartphone smartphone go to the app store download podcast addict there's some other ones load it on your phone it's free then go to the search type in rv talk radio and there we are plop and you say subscribe and then you can put on your little headphones and listen to us at work or at lunchtime um you know when you're doing yard work <laughs> working on your rv <laughs> we're right there hey we're actually it's fun to listen to our show when you're just kicking back outside your rv at happy hour so there you go rv talk radio is here to stay Well, me and Sherry try to go for a walk every night because, uh, you know, she's got this Fitbit thing and so she's always watching her steps. So, uh, and I need to get out of here and so I tag along and so is the dog. <laughs> so, but the other day, uh, day I saw something I've never seen before and it was a fifth wheel. It's a, it was a Montana. So I always kind of know it's Montana's because that's what me and Sherry have. And it had the front living room design, but the front, the the front, the, the capsule in the front, folks, was a window. I've never seen that before. I'm mean, like, Rob, where you been? But I'm sorry, I've just never seen one. And it was like, wow, that's that's pretty dang cool. <laughs> so I gotta go check one of those out because it's like, well, you know. In another year or two, we might be thinking about trading in things. Who knows? I might stay with a fifth wheel. That was pretty cool. And I noticed that we have the rear entertainment system. Well, in their case, it could be the front entertainment system because you can see that, not that I was snooping or anything, but their television is in the back, which comes up like ours from the floor and blocks the window, which uh, actually is probably fine because... Um, you don't really want people looking in your window like I was doing. <laughs> now that sounds creepy now. <laughs> um, 
Maybe I don't want a window in the front of my RV. <laughs> anyway, it looked really cool. I just never seen that before. And uh, I believe it was... I, so I went to the Montana website, which... Um, Keystone. And uh, uh, it's a called a 3711 and 3710. And they both said new. I don't know what the differences are. But I got to go check one of those out. The other thing I was going to tell you about is... When you're not using your RV, just like a boat, same thing. Uh, it's amazing we're not rolling anywhere and we're still breaking things. <laughs> so, so we're draining the tanks and Sherry um, pulled on one of the uh, uh, gray tanks. We have you have two gray, gray tanks that have levers and you have a black tank lever. Anyway, the lever that let, relieves the gray tank for the sinks and stuff like that, which is kind of near the wheels pulls it and the handle actually bent a little bit and popped off turns out it's it's screwed on to the lever that go that causes it to uh, clo um, uh, close and open and it's a screwed on thing and it I don't know if it's whatever the coupler for that broke and so <laughs> now I gotta go figure out is that a part that I can just go buy so I'm going to take it over to Camping World, start there, and see if I can get that coupler. Um, put it in, and it's like, I, if it turns out to be some stupid thing you got a back order for, it's going to drive me crazy. Luckily, it's stuck open, which we're not going anywhere, so I'd rather it be open. So the problem is we can never shut it until we replace this uh, handle thing. So it's a, uh, so we got the handle. It's about three feet long. It's got a little coupler screw thing that attaches to another line that goes off to the valve which you can't see goes underneath so luckily it sticks out underneath enough that we can see it we took the broken part of the coupler off so it's just sitting there waiting to be joined again so anyway it just never stops people it just never stops there's always something to work on and so um, but, uh, boy, if you get a chance to go check out one of those new Montanas <laughs> with the window in the front, <laughs> pretty cool. So, any uh, RV shows coming on, make sure there's a Montana in there. And everybody start copying each other. So, I'm, and it may be other makes are doing that too, but this is the first time I've ever seen a window in the front of a fifth wheel. It was pretty cool. <laughs> As many of you folks already know that uh, Sherry and I are in Arizona. Of course, we're going to go into the hot months <laughs> doing the opposite of what the snowbirds are doing. And uh, so we actually got exposed to our first 102 degree weather, I guess. <laughs> and so here's some amazing things. One is, uh, it's a good thing I got a little pull for cinder. That's one. Two is, it, I couldn't believe what I saw the other day. And actually it was not because of of the hot weather well not because of the 100 but uh our water line i have insulated and have a heating cord in it for freezing temperatures <laughs> which is still on it anyway the insulation that we've wrapped around our water hose uh, which we you can buy at home depot uh, it's just like a styrofoam split styrofoam you put around your hose and you tape it on it stays on and we also run the wire through it part of that that's exposed to the sunshine has melted <laughs> I couldn't believe it the insulation is shrunk up real tight and stuff from the insane heat I guess from the Sun and the fact of the concrete part uh, of the place we're parked here is that amazing or what? I just never thought that would ever happen. So, uh, of course, the other thing we bought was a bunch of that. Um, uh, we went to um, Camping World and got some of that metal. Uh, it's insulation you put in your windows. I've still got to put those in. But, boy, I mean, you can walk up to a window and just feel the heat just coming through. Just like when you're in the cold, it's just the opposite. You can feel the cold coming through drafts. So amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, Sherry and I are just not used to that kind of weather. 
And, uh, I mean, we've been in it before, you know, what to expect. And the other thing is, uh, I was being careful to make sure that we don't run out real quick with Cinder to go let her go potty and be aware that we're on hot concrete. So, we may actually have to get little booties or socks for Cinder. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, not really a problem in the mornings and the evenings, but mid-afternoon, it's like uh, I really watch her and see if it's bothering her. And um, uh, I am prepared to get her the little socks. I, I don't know how I'm going to get little socks in Cinder's feet, but <laughs> it should be fun trying. Anyway, <coughs> uh, the one thing I noticed the most is... Uh, even though I was up in Washington, we're miserable, the gray skies and the rain, and it's depressing. I really miss the Washington and Oregon uh, summers. Uh, there's nothing more beautiful than the Northwest summers, especially if you're on the evergreen side of things. Uh, it's just... Uh, it doesn't last long. You only have it for a couple of months. And even during some of those uh, those couple of months, there's um, ugly days between that. But that's the magic of what keeps it so green and beautiful over there. Anyway, uh, uh, the other thing I've noticed is um, uh, watching some of the sailing shows like I've been telling you and stuff. Uh, I miss the ocean and fishing and, and uh, some of those activities. So... Boy, I tell you, it just, it's always, the grass is always greener on the other side, you know? <laughs> so, um, definitely missing the Northwest, miss the water, miss the activities, uh, but I don't miss the long months and months and months of gray clouds and rain and traffic, especially in the Seattle area. Uh, those are depressing, and yet you get down here and you get the extreme hot weather and uh, it's constantly hot, constantly having to run air conditioners, and um, you can't have your can't have Cinder in the car and let her sit in the car at all. It's like everything's difficult. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> Just thought I did. I guess the moral of this whole story is the grass is always greener. I guess, but um, I do. Uh, if you have a a chance to visit the Northwest uh, and you haven't been there yet uh, it's worth seeing uh, some of the cities like Portland and, and uh, Oregon area are kind of a nightmare to drive in but they're still beautiful Seattle is a nightmare a lot of construction going on down there right now but very beautiful and plus they've got their ferries and they've got their Pike Place Market and all kinds of really neat stuff and uh, um, I actually have a friend of mine, Aaron Jimerson, that I brought up before, uh, getting ready to put some material together about activities and tourism in Washington State. And I already offered uh, him the opportunity to have some spots on the, on any of our shows to present any of that. Because <clears throat> if you have some kind of target you want to look for in your RV travels, I highly recommend the Northwest may not be the place you want to live after the summer, summer months because it is gray and dreary. And if you're used to bright and uh, sunshine and openness, like Arizona, <laughs> uh, a place like that will get it, uh, really take you down. And it uh, can be um, not that healthy, too. Uh, you'll feel a little bit claustrophobic and a little depressed, and it really can affect your health so things to think about but this time of year when spring and summer is coming the northwest is beautiful this part of the show i wanted to take the time to recognize a few folks um here are the couple of regulars that we keep seeing as i just want just want to say thank you for your comments and feedback uh girls with guns love her comments Blacktop Boondocker, Pine Mountain um, Ventures, appreciate all your feedback. Uh, Lenny Jones, David Smith, as always, I can always count on some information from him. Our RV, which is O U R V, is uh, their call signals. TT Travels, Freedom Lifestyle, Gary Campbell, and Camping with the Kellys, appreciate all your feedback. I, I want to put another special uh, thank you out to. 
uh, and some of these people are on the other list on, on the first list but uh, the video we did on facing the turning point video about retirement and things like that got some really good information so I want to thank and these are just call signals so these aren't people's names necessarily um, this one's actually a number Z061309 we thank you for your feedback the southern lady uh, Bonnie Robertson Matt uh, Col Coluda, uh, C A L U D A, Norm K, uh, Lou uh, Fudrecker, <laughs> I don't know if that's a name or if that's the name of his channel, Tracy Hamilton, uh, Pedicine Hippie, oh, which is P I Pedicine, uh, I think it's P I D A S uh, I G N hip Hippie. Anyway, thank you. Appreciate your feedback. Boat designer, good feedback. Love Music 57, Hershey Motorhome, JN Jazz, always like your comments. Thank you very much. John Mercer, uh, DJ Mans, which is DJ and the word Mans 76. We appreciate your feedback. New Beginnings, we always love you guys. Uh, you guys have been commenting with us for a long time. Appreciate it. And RV Mike on that pro uh, particular show. Thank you very much for your feedback. So I know I've missed lots of people. We get uh, stuff and I'm going to try a little harder to take the time to say hello and thank you for your comments. We're asking for the comments. We're getting them and we're grateful. Please take the time to uh, send us more notes. Uh, uh, go to our site at rvtalkradio.com. Go to the comment section. We now got the new radio station, which is once again, it has a comment section, uh, has a contact page. And it's that one's outdoortravelradio.com. Give us a holler. Uh, please tell people about us. Please uh, subscribe to us. Get the podcast uh, cast put on your phone. You'll love it. And <laughs> we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Um, we have a few folks helping us out in the background. I want to make sure that Aaron Jimerson gets a thank you from us personally. Uh, he's been helping us uh, tweak some of our sites, some of our websites, helping with the new radio station. And he's a busy person too because he's got a 9 to 5 job to uh, that. So we are also love to get more help if there's people interested in uh, uh, participating. Uh, it's all kind of just for fun and volunteerism type of things right now, but uh, that could all change. Uh, if you get a chance to get one of our stickers or get a chance to uh, go to our sites and uh, support us with a donation, uh, we, we consider that a tip. We appreciate it. Um, and we'll just keep continuing to do what we can. We have a lot more uh, equipment we have to order. We're doing that. Uh, uh, going through music now we've got some licenses we have to keep up now so it's all good so i'm rob scribner from rv talk radio thank you very much for listening please don't hesitate to give us your comments everybody be safe out there and drive nice would you <laughs> anyway talk to you next monday thanks again bye now <laughs>